If you want to learn how to service, repair and restore 19th and 20th century mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. In this video, we'll remove the barrel mainspring from an alarm clock. Having removed it, we'll clean the mainspring, grease it and manually reinsert it back into the barrel mainspring. That wheel there that I'm pointing out with the tweezers is holding the barrel mainspring in place. We'll have to remove that. I can easily move it backwards forwards with the tweezers. I'll try to move the barrel by rocking it backwards and forwards. It's relatively tight. But with a little bit of extra pressure, the barrel pulls out and you'll see that little wheel fall off at the back. And that's the barrel containing the mainspring. That wheel there will twist off. The winding arbor is attached to that wheel. And you can see that little bit of pressure on it. That's winding it up with a spring in it. So I'll gently pull that wheel out and you'll see that the mainspring is starting to come out of the barrel. We have to be very careful doing this because we don't want to damage the mainspring or cause it to pyramid. There's the back of the barrel has come off. So the spring is now out, but still attached to the winding arbor, as you can see there. The spring is still attached to the winding arbor. That's the lug there that's holding it on. That's the back of the barrel with the winding arbor protruding. I'll use a pair of tweezers to loosen the spring from the, from the lug on the winding arbor. And there's the main spring released from the barrel. Still nice and flat, no pyramiding in it. So we'll now move on to the next step, clean it and grease it and then put it back into the barrel. I have a tub of kerosene set up here. And there's a spring, you can see pieces of dirt sitting on it. We'll get rid of all that by dropping it into the blue kerosene and swizzing it round, agitating it, and letting it sit there for a while and letting the kerosene do its job. Seeing this skinny little spring reminds me I've got some watch repair videos to shoot pretty soon. They also have very small springs in them. Well that's looking a bit better. It's always an idea to leave springs in uh, a cleaning solution like this for three or four minutes so that any dirt and stuff can really get softened up for the next step which I'm about to do now. I'll remove the spring from the cleaning solution and I'll rub over it with a Q-tip to help remove any small particles of dirt that are still attached to the spring. I just rub it round gently, we don't want to distort the spring because it should be pretty clean by now anyway. But you can see there's a little bit of gunk coming off onto the Q-tip. A little bit there, you can see discoloration, that's dirt. Some more work with a Q-tip to make sure that the spring is completely clean. Getting right in between each of the coils. You'll also notice there, looking at the spring, that the coils are all relatively concentric. There's no coils that are the distance between one coil and the next is far different than on the other side. So that means that the spring is still in good shape. It hasn't been bent out of shape. 
little bit of gunk on the end of the right in the end of the spring so I'll clean that back into the solution quick shake round get rid of the last stuff that we've removed and then take the spring out right there's our clean spring we're now going to dry it on some acid free paper put the spring on the paper we'll now run round both sides of each of the coils with a q-tip to dry it off q-tips are very handy in these sort of situations That'll remove the blue kerosene still on the spring and still getting a little bit of muck off it apparently by the look of the end of the Q-tip. Run over it both sides, cleaning it up including in the centre. All the way round, that should be relatively dry by now I would think. We'll put it on another piece of paper, acid free paper, and just see if any kero runs off it or not. The spring has been greased now. We're going to put it back into the barrel. And here you can see the spring. I've attached the spring already to the winding arbor to establish which direction the spring is wound into the barrel. There it is there, you can see that. Turn it over the other side. I'll take that out for a moment. The hole on that end of the spring, there that I've just shown you, fits into that little lug there within the barrel. It is a tiny little lug, a bit hard to see. There it is just there, the end of the tweezers. And that's where we manually start winding the spring back into the barrel. The whole end of the spring goes over that little lug I showed you inside the barrel. And then it's just a matter of holding the spring in one hand and the barrel in the other hand. Then very slowly and carefully working the spring back into the barrel. It can't be done quickly you might bend or twist or kink the spring it has to be done slowly just concentrate on what you're doing and keep winding the spring inside the last coil that you put inside the the barrel and just wind it round the spring's nowhere near as strong as a clock spring so that's not so much of a drama but it's the same operation for winding, hand winding a clock spring back into a barrel if you haven't got a spring winder. We just continue turning the spring round. Remember this has been greased so it's obviously a little bit slippery. So you have to take that into account when you're winding it around. But we're getting there, we're over halfway round now. That last centerpiece you can see there is just going to pop in when we get down to it. And we're about there now. It's about to go flat. And there it is. The spring is now inside the barrel. And there was some little bit of grease on the outside of the barrel that came off while I was putting the spring in so we'll wipe that off with a clean cloth to remove it there we go looking nice and clean now we put the winding arbor back on that piece there you can see the little lug on that that has to fit into the center loop of the spring so 
we'll position that, see where it is. Position it and push it in. We'll have to turn it round a few times, clockwise and anti-clockwise, to make sure that it has actually caught. And there it is, it's dropped in now. You can see it's nice and flat. So the spring is properly seated within the barrel. Now just to test to make sure that it is in correctly, I'll take a, a set of pliers and holding the pliers tightly on the winding arbor, I'll spin the barrel around in the correct direction and we'll see that the coil has actually caught and it's winding on nicely. I'm doing it there now. You can feel tension on it so the spring is working properly and the barrel is set up correctly. There it is, you can see it unwinding. Another quick clean up with it. Take any extraneous grease off on, that's on the outside of it and then put it aside.